Okay, welcome everybody. I'm so glad so many of you could come. Uh, this morning we had about 100 people out of session, so we're just kind of rolling right along. Um, as Kelly said, this is above and beyond what you do in your ordinary jobs, and so we really appreciate the time that you take to be part of the campaign. So what we're going to do today is um, talk about what is Campus Campaign and go through the calendar of how you should be planning the campaign for your area and what you should be doing throughout. So what is Campus Campaign? Um, very simply, it is the annual effort where we ask faculty and staff to give to something at the university that they believe strongly about, whether that's a scholarship, a program, research, whatever that might be. When does it occur? The active phase, the phase when you'll be doing most of your stuff, is between February, I'm sorry, between March 1st and April 30th. So that's the, the main time of the campaign. The campaign actually started back on July 1. It's a fiscal year campaign. So when we count our participation, we'll be looking at gifts that have come into the university starting July 1, 2011, all the way through April 30th. Now during the campaign, I said it's, April, it's March 1st to April 30th. I didn't have any problems when we weren't taping this session. Um, it'll be during that time period, but you might say, we're going to focus the campaign for our area in these three weeks, or these four weeks. Um, so it will occur as the campaign fits best for your unit. So the timeline. Where do we begin? We've already begun. You're at the training. Thank you all. You can cross that off of your list of things to do. The next thing is to um, make your own gift. It's always easiest when you're going to ask someone else to do something if you're willing or have done it already yourself. It's very easy. The online giving site is already up and running, so you can go on and do that now. If you have a payroll deduction, it's ongoing, so you can just go online, check to see if you want to make any changes and do that. Or you can go online and make a credit card gift. Plan your campaign strategy. Now for some of you, if you're in a small unit, the planning may take all of 15 minutes. This is what I'm going to do, who I'm going to give the cards to, how I'm going to communicate with them. If you're from a bigger unit or from Marion campus, you may plan multiple events and plan multiple types of communications with your staff. And it may take a little bit longer. But ultimately, it's up to what you plan for your area. We usually suggest that if you have an area with more than 20 people in it, you get someone in your unit to help you with it. If there's only 15, 20 people, you're in a condensed geographical area, you know everybody, maybe you don't need any help. Although it's always fun to pull a coworker in and to do it together. The next thing is gift packet and poster delivery. Gift packets, what will come in the packets, each individual person will get an envelope with their personalized information in it. It will have a brochure, a return envelope, and their pledge card. And again, the pledge card will list where they've given to in the past year. So you're going to decide, how am I going to deliver this to my staff? You're going to plan, is it going to be, I'm going to come up and I'm going to hand Jean her card and ask her to make a gift this year or continue making her gift this year because she's given in the past. I just happen to know that. Um, or are you going to go to a staff meeting, and because that's really the only time when you see everybody in your unit, and you're going to pass out all their personalized cards, and maybe give it a little spiel at the meeting about campus campaign, why it's important to give, some of the different opportunities, that sort of thing. Or the least preferred method would be, we never see our staff, because they're all over campus, they're all over the university, but they do have a mailbox. We'll put it in the mailbox. That's the least preferred method. Because sometimes it gets in the mailbox, it goes straight from the mailbox to circular file. Without that one-on-one -on -one interaction, sometimes that's what, what happened. And even if people are going to continue doing the same thing they've done in the past, they need to take a look at their card. So it's best if you can find a way to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Events, if you're going to have an event, um, there are multiple different kinds of events you can have. Events can be meetings, they can be potlucks, they can be you name it. Campus Campaign, it's a fundraiser. It is also an opportunity for you to build community within your units. Um, sometimes we have a chili cook-off in development, and sometimes that's the only time I actually get an opportunity to interact with some of the people in the units who come over and make fantastic chili, or not so fantastic chili. Gift packet pickup and delivery. If you work at, in one of the colleges on main campus, or if you're at a regional campus, Regional campuses, your courier will pick up. 
the materials from our office. If you are on main campus, there are team captains associated with the council who will make sure that you get your cards. If you're in the medical center, we'll have a pickup day, and that will be on February 27th. It's a Monday from 10 to 12, and there will be three different pickup locations, one at UH East, one here, and one at Ackerman Road. And next week, we will be sending everyone an email telling you what assigned location we've given you to pick up yours up. At that time, you can look at it and say, no, it would be better for me to pick them up at this other location. And we can make that switch at that time. So there will be those three locations, and there will be a two-hour window for you to pick things up. When you pick things up, you will also be picking up posters. There will be some available for you as you go out the door here, and you'll also be able to get more when you pick up posters or pick up your supplies. In addition, I'm too short. You will also each receive some of these little thank you notes or little note cards if you want to write a thank you note to your donors. You will also all be receiving some of these little sticky pads. And that's a nice if you, you know, aren't into writing long notes of thank you. I can't always think of a personalized one for every person I'm talking to. So it's nice to just write thanks for making a gift, Tina. And you can put the sticky on someone's desk or somewhere just to know that they've, you've said thank you to them. Or use it for whatever other purposes you'd like. So those are the types of things that you'll be receiving in your packets or in your packages that you pick up. So that's February. March. Campaign starts on March 1st. And on that day, President Gee will be sending out an email to um, everyone on campus, encouraging them to participate and thanking everyone for being such um, generous faculty and staff in everything that we do. There will also be an article in On Campus and a corresponding um, article in a Med Center publication. We will not be having a kickoff this year. We've had one for like the last two years and um, put a lot of time and effort into them. But what we found is that faculty and staff really can't get away from their offices to come to an event. There's just too much going on these days to get away for very long. Um, so we've decided to save some money, save some time, save some of your valuable time, and say, if you're going to have a kickoff, have something in your area. March 1st, whatever day you decide to make things happen in your office, you might have cookies or you might have something going on to say it's kicked off. What we ask is if you have planned your campaign to happen between this week and this week or this date and that date, um, try to include in that plan to have your packets delivered by the 20th. We say that only because people need, you'll need to have time to remind people to make their gift, remind them to go online, to thank them. People need to send their stuff in. It will give gift processing more time to get the gift processed. So we're just trying to give that deadline. I know there have been times in the past where we didn't set a deadline. And I'd get an email from someone and they'd say, you know, it's April 15th and I give every year, but I haven't got my card yet. And I'll call the volunteer. I say, so I've you know, had a phone call. Someone said they hadn't got their card yet. When did you deliver them? Oh, I delivered them a couple weeks ago. A couple weeks ago. Listen to the person who called me originally calls back and said, guess what I got in my mailbox this morning? My campus campaign pledge card because the volunteer forgot. So it's easiest, once we get them to you, distribute them, make your solicitation. Don't let the, let the packets sit around. OK. Throughout March, starting around the second, maybe third week of March, we're in a new, with a new computer system. We're not sure exactly when the reports will start. Um, probably the second, maybe the third week. You'll be getting them on either Tuesday afternoons or Wednesday mornings. And those reports will include one will have the information on the white sheet that everyone has. It'll be very similar to this, and it will indicate what your standing is as far as the rest of the university, um, and if you can use this as a reference to show how things have changed since last year. Um, you will also be getting, along with that, a link to an Excel spreadsheet. That Excel spreadsheet will have, say, if you're in <coughs> College of Medicine, it'll be College of Medicine will be in one big document. This department, the employees in that department, next department, employees in that department, 
and then there will be a box next to each name. If it's checked off, that person has participated. That means they have made a gift or, or have an active payroll deduction since July 1 of last year. It doesn't tell you how much they've given, it doesn't tell you where they gave, and it doesn't tell you how they gave, whether it was check, credit card, anything like that. It just tells you that they're participating. Some people are uncomfortable with that report. If you are one of those people, feel free to let me know and I can take you off of receiving that particular link. That's no problem. In addition on that email, there will also usually be reminders about different things. There might be a reminder about the celebration and that you need to nominate someone for an award. There, there might be all kinds of little reminders on there or questions. Um, especially if we've had a few phone calls with people asking the same question, we want to be sure and put that out there for everybody to hear. So. March is all about communication. It's you've handed out your packets, it's communicating with the folks in your units to let them know how you're doing. Um, encouraging faculty and staff to make their gift. I, the deadline is April 30th. Put April 27th on there because that's a Friday. April 30th is a Monday. No one's going to remember to do something by Monday. By Friday, yes. By Monday, they've forgotten it over, over the weekend what they were supposed to do. And it gives us a few more days to get things processed. Because we invariably we have someone call and say, can I get everything over to you on Friday? But yes. Better on Friday, so at least we can get the mail opened and processed on Monday than Monday and rolls on into the rest of the week. So again, for the celebration, what we count, we're all about participation. Everything processed by April 30th, give or take a couple days. April, keep promoting, keep asking, keep thanking, thanking your donors, thanking your fellow volunteers. If you're all done with the work that you've done for the campaign, you've reached the, your goals, um, you're kind of done, just thank the people that you've worked with on the campaign. Encourage you to get online giving. It's safe, it's easy, it's really convenient. When you go online, you can change what you're giving to, you can change the dollar amount, um, you can um, make new funds that you want to make a gift to, but it's really easy. And um, it's, it does exactly what you tell it to. If you tell it $50 per pay, that's what's going to go on. It takes out the human error other than our own personal error um, doing it online. 30th, again, is the participation deadline. 30th is also the deadline for nominations for recognition at the celebration. I know you all will do super fantastic jobs, so we want to be able to recognize you for what you do. So there will be nomination forms for recognition on the website. And you can nominate a coworker, you can nominate yourself, um, you can nominate uh, a team. If you have a team of people who work, work together in your area, you can nominate the whole team for a team award. And when we say nominate for recognition, again, you're all doing something above and beyond your job. So whether you're doing some, a whole bunch of big events that you think, oh, you know, or you're not and you think, oh, I haven't done all that much. I've handed out the cards and I've sent out a couple emails, big deal. Well, big deal. You've done it. You've made the effort. You've maybe you've maintained participation in your unit. Maybe you've increased it, but you've done your job. You've done what you needed to do and it's above and beyond your everyday duties. So nominate yourself. We usually get about 30, 35 nominations and we give out about um, 12 or 15 awards, it depends. May, again, it's more thanking, thanking volunteers, thanking donors. Celebration event itself will be on either May 22nd or May 24th. We are crossing our fingers that we will have Urban Meyer for one of those dates, and that's why we were holding off on which date it will be. Um, President Gay is already, his calendar is busy, so we're hoping that uh, next best would be Urban Meyer to come visit us. We know it will be at the Fawcett Center. We know it will be at 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, so those are, those, that part is set. Who can come? Any volunteer? Any coordinator? There are between six and 700. Um, who, are, who fall into that category. We usually have about 200, 240 who come to the event. I anticipate if Urban does say yes, that number may increase. Um, so volunteers, 
coordinators and leadership. We invite leadership from across campus to join us at that event, and many of them do. So university-wide participation goal. Again, participation is our goal, not necessarily the dollars that are raised. It's participation. This year, our goal is 40%. Last year, we were at 39.3%, which was down slightly from the year before. Um, we had solicited or asked more people to join us in the campaign. I believe it was 1,200 more people last year than we had in the past, a group of employees that hadn't joined us. So they're getting in the groove, and hopefully they'll participate a little bit more this year. Um, but what you'll want to do when you're planning is take a look at this sheet and see, okay, last year we were at 27%. We want our goal this year to be 29%. How many people might that be? Well, in some units, raising your percentage by 2% might be 10 people. In other areas, that might be 50 people, depending on how big your area is. So set your goals accordingly of what you think would be a good goal for your area. Honestly, there are areas across campus that have had lots of cuts. They've had people who have had um, re mandatory retirements or requested retirements that, you know, their morale might be a little bit lower. So you might be good to maintain the participation you were at the year before. And it's very understandable in this economy and the way things are that we be cognizant of those kinds of factors when we plan our goals. We also know that there continues to be so much that we can support here that people will continue supporting the university. So. Planning, the ask, we've gone through that. Generating excitement. Generating excitement could be an event. Uh, we've had events across campus where I believe it was in business and finance. They had one of those shower things you pull it and you get all wet and clean off. Well, they put their supervisors in there. They turned in their gift packet, not necessarily their gift form. Not necessarily they made a gift, but um, they, could, they could douse their... Uh, their director or dean or whoever that happened to be. Are you up for that, Greg? No? <laughs> okay. No. You melt. Very good. Too sweet. You'd melt. Gotcha. Um, another thing could be at a meeting, you could tell a great story. Um, this past week, I was privileged to hear a really great story. We had the training at the Thompson Library. I'm going to get a drink before I. And. After the event, we went over to set up for the next day over in psychology. And there was someone working the building. It was after 5 o'clock. And he said, you know, it's kind of late for you to be here. What are you guys doing in this particular room? He said, oh, we're setting up for a training for campus campaign. And he said, oh, I love campus campaign. I'm thinking, he doesn't know I'm the director. That's pretty cool. He said, oh, I said, well, why do you like it so much? What, what's, you know, you don't always hear that. Why do you like it so much? He said, well, a couple years ago, he said, I worked in the College of Dentistry. And we had this wonderful student. He was one of those students that he came in the office, he got to know everybody, he was really friendly, he asked how people were, he engaged with everybody here. You know, because we've got some grad students or other students who'll be like, you're supposed to do this for me, do this, 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 and this, and they have all these expectations, but they're not nice. This kid, everybody loved him. Graduated, started to set up his practice. Within two years, he died. And everybody in the, in the college was like, oh, this kid had so much potential. He was so wonderful. He was going to be a great ambassador for the university. He was going to be a great ambassador for his profession. He was just going to be awesome. So the college said, we want to establish a scholarship in this kid's name. Another thing about this kid, he was one of the very few African Americans who had gone through the program. And so that was just a double loss. So they said, we want a scholarship in this kid's name. So they had fundraising events in the community, they had events at the college, and they asked the staff there, give to this fund to honor this, this, this student that graduated. They have an endowed scholarship in his name now. So through his death, his you know, legacy of, of the wonderful person he was and was going to be will continue on in the college. So you can tell stories about funds like that or funds that you give to that will help people understand that it's not just about giving back to the department you work in. Because you don't have to give back to the department you work in. You can give anywhere on this campus that you would like to give. Planning. So 
It's, again, how do you want to communicate about the campaign? What goal do you want to set? What approach would be best for your area? You know your staff best. And generating excitement. And stewardship. Stewardship, again, is the thanking, whether it's a piece of paper that you use or it's just verbally coming up and thanking for someone for helping you. I'm not going to go through all the details on this because you can all check it out. One of the uh, big things, events um, should be as cash-free as possible. Uh, in general, general speaking, with fundraising events here at the university, when you um, want to get gift credit for it, if you are buying lunch, if you're buying a hot dog and a pretzel and pop, you're buying lunch, you're not making a, a gift. You, so you're not gonna, you shouldn't get individual gift credit for that. But on the flip side of that, if your unit wants to have something like that, just to generate excitement and get people together and camaraderie, you could say, okay, everybody come in and five, pay $5 or $3 or whatever you want. And we'll pull all that money together and all the money from this event will go towards XYZ fund. So individual credit isn't given for those $5 gifts. Those five dollar, those five dollars, because they're not even really gifts, um, but it can go from the office of yeah, X Y Z. I'm not that creative. Um, X Y Z to such and such a fund, but they're not individual gift credits given. Or you can have an event where people come and do things, and you say all you have to do is bring your envelope and turn it in. Well, that envelope probably will have their card in it but you don't know if they've made a gift or not, if they've canceled a gift, if they have increased their giving, if they've changed a fund. You'll just know they turned something in. And that's the only requirement. There's no actual cash or giving requirement to it. Raffles. I know uh, pharmacy, where's Gail at? They do some awesome events around March Madness. Um, if you want ideas on how to do some events, Gail back there is awesome, and so is our Marion crew here. They do a great job. What is a gift? A gift is valued. It's valued by the donors, by you, and it's value, valued by the university. The university truly appreciates all the gifts that we receive. And the, the programs that you give and the scholarships um, are all very appreciative. It's a generous donation to a cause. Now, sometimes Folks get a little bit like generous. Mm, generous, what does that mean? Well, for me, for my discretionary income, um, it may be that generous for me, because of what's going on in my life right now, might be $10. Or it might be $10 per pay. Or it might be a $5,000 gift. Or it's up to the individual what their discretionary income is. Um, what they feel strongly about. We, I have some folks who will actually, they'll call or email and apologize because they say, I can only give this much. And I wish I could give more. But you're doing what you can. I had one woman who said, she was very planful. She said, this year, I'm giving to my church. Next year, I'm giving to Campus Campaign. The year after that, I'm giving to Bucks for Charity. Then, then I, she said, I just follow around on this loop and that's how I do my giving. I was like, that's great. She's very planful. She knows exactly how she wants to use her discretionary income. The gift is personal. It says what you value. And it's freely given, not the result of being pressured or forced. Nor is it made by another person in your name. Giving to Campus Campaign is optional. No one is required to make a gift to this fundraising drive. Do we think that there's so many things out there that everybody should want to? Yes, of course we do. There's so many great things we do here, but no one has to give. There is no one person, no one's, as far as I know, raise is determined by whether they get 100% participation in their unit. We want high participation, but people have every right to say no. I have one of my best friends at the university, well, she happens to work at the university. Um, she refuses to make a gift. I tease her about it, and I try to nudge her, and I'm like, you're making me look bad here. 
come on. But it's up to her. If I wanted her to, if I called her right now, she would be here in five minutes to help me with any way she can. She just doesn't happen to believe in making cash contributions to anything. She'll want. So there are people out there who just will not make a gift. Um, as a result of that, we have some areas who get so enthusiastic, they want to say, OK, we've got all these pledge cards. I'm going to take all these pledge cards, and I'm going to open them up, which you should never be opening up someone else's mail. And I'm going to attach $5 to each card. We will get 100% participation that way. No. Basically, you've, you know, if someone claims that on their taxes, you know, I don't know if it would be fraud or illegal, which was the best term for that, but you're, you're cheating. It's not right. And who knows, that, person, that person's going to get a tax receipt for it, that they made a gift. And they could call me and they could say, I'd like a refund. I didn't make that gift. And I could have a refund check issued to them because they didn't make the gift, they didn't want to make the gift, and they end up feeling angry, and they share that with their coworkers, and it just puts a whole bad feeling all the way around. So gifts should not be forced, should not be given in someone else's name. Now, if you want to honor somebody, if you have someone in your department that you want to honor, say, I want to give a gift in honor of this person, you can do that, but you get the gift credit, not the person you're honoring. Volunteer resources, we have all kinds of volunteer resources on the website. Um, you can get to the website through OneSource, or you can go to campuscampaign.osu.edu. Both places link to the same information. So there's printable giving form. If someone loses the packet that you hand to them, and they don't want to actually make their gift through the online system, they can go online, print a new form. There's also, in addition to the thank you cards we'll have in some of your packets, there's also going to be a printed, printable form. There'll be frequently, frequently asked questions. There'll be a set of frequently asked questions for the general populace, and a frequently asked questions for just our volunteers. There'll also be a volunteer handbook where most of the frequently asked questions is. Um, with tam timeline, sim similar to what you already have in your hands. Uh, sample communications. Campaign graphics, um, you have probably saw the poster as you came in, um, and there will be graphics for that that you can use in your units. For example, there's a graphic that people around campus had the sign saying, um, I give at the office. That graphic will be in there, so if you want to have something in their unit where you take pictures of people and create your own little poster, you'll have that graphic already there. There's also a template of the poster itself. There's also um, a button graphic. Uh, just like this one, and there's also a button graphic that you can um, complete yourself. Another resource is the Campus Campaign Office. Primarily, that's me and my office. Um, Lindsay is more than happy to help out where she can, but most of the phone calls and emails will be coming into my office. I do my best to respond to any of your questions within 24 hours. If I don't, send it to me again because I've either, I'm either sick or I didn't get it, or I screwed up on my email account, um, which wouldn't, yeah, it happens. Um, so those are the basic resources. Also have the website on the web. You can look up funds by going onto the website and going to make your gift online or search for funds. You do have to log in. At the medical center, it would be your Novell, Log in and your one source IDs. And on um, main campus uh, for entry onto the site, it would be your name, dot number, and password. You can go on in the site and look up funds by keyword, by fund number. You can look through different areas. You drop down lists for the list of the colleges. You can look at funds that way. If you go online and you don't find what you're looking for and you think, I know there's a fund out there that deals with. Um, with chickens that whatever, and you, you've heard about it, email me and I will look up um, the funds. Not, not all of the roughly 7,000 funds that are out there are on the website. There are about 4,500, I think. So I'm happy to help you generate lists for your areas as well. So those resources. 
Again, you can make a gift online or through your, with your gift form. Payroll deductions are continuous until further notice. So if you have, if you set up a payroll deduction last year, it's continuing on through this year. It continues on and on until you tell us to stop. You can tell us to stop at any time. So you could call me in October or November and say, hey, you know, I started my deduction. I'd, I'd like to stop it right now or I want to change. You know, it's giving to feline leukemia fund, but now I think I want to give to the STAR program. Can I change it? You can change it. You can say, oh, I, th I heard about this cool new fund and I want to add that to my deductions. So you can call at any time or email at any time during the year and we can make those changes. It might take a pay period um, to catch up to it, but we can make those changes. Credit card gifts, whether it's online or on your gift card, have to be a minimum of five dollars. Payroll deductions, it's a minimum of one dollar per pay. We have, some people have asked, well how many places can I make my gift to? How many designations can I have? We're pulling the reports to send to the vendor this week to print everyone's pledge card and I have someone out there that is giving to 18 different funds. They're giving a couple bucks to one and one dollar to another, that, but they're giving to 18 different funds. Most people it's one or two or three, but we have those crazy people out there that um, can't decide. There's so many great things to support. They can't decide what they're going to do. Participation reports. Again, I mentioned before, you'll receive them. Yes? Yes. Yes. We recommend that if you're sending your gift back in through campus mail, that you not do cash um, just because it's, it's mail and someone could open it. Um, it's better if it would be a, a check. There are some areas who will, if they're, how do you say this? Some areas, they just say, okay, here's your envelope with all your package. There's a return envelope in there. You guys take care of it yourself. There are some areas who the volunteer will say, turn your cards back into me, and I'll make sure they all get over to 1480. So those are areas a lot of times that will have cash in their envelopes. So cash is acceptable just at your own, at your own risk through campus mail actually through any mail. Um, okay, the reports again every week, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning, will depend by email. Um, what do you do with them? That is entirely up to, do, up to you. What you do not do is share them with anybody else. You do not post them anywhere. Um, you do not use them to single out individuals to send out an email that says, hey gang, send it to your department, say, okay, everybody's participated, but Sally and Joe, everybody go gang up on them and make sure they, they give so we can get 100%. No. You might send an email out that says, our goal was 65%, and we only need two more people to get to that place. If you haven't made your gift right now, here's the link. Or if you haven't decided where you're going to give and you need some help, let me know. But you make them very generalized. It might be the time that you decide I will thank everybody. You might decide to think, okay, this week we have these new donors, I'll thank them, and next week these new donors. Or you might say, I'm gonna wait until the end of the campaign, like maybe the first week in May, and then I'll send out all my thank yous at the same time. And again, if you work next to each other, it could just be thank you, or it could be a card or a note or a mini candy bar, whatever, whatever you work out. So we have questions sometimes about how Pelotonia wraps into campus campaign and campus campaign participation. Um, the simple answer is if you make a gift to Pelotonia at pelotonia.org or through a writer between July 1, 2011 through April 30th, 2012, your gifts will count in campus campaign 2012. That's the simple answer. Um, but this fiscal year, so July 1, 2011, through April 30th. Preferably, uh, the sooner those gifts come in, the better, simply because they're on about a two week time lag, week and a half time lag. So if you made a report, if you made a gift today, our gift processing office wouldn't see it for about 10 days. Um, what happens, we've had questions, well how do they figure out who we are? Well, simply said we get a feed from Pelotonia and they say, 
you know, John Smith, $50, Mary, $20. So they, they give it. We have the report. We match folks up. The only time it becomes a problem to match folks up is if you use some kind of nickname on the Pelotonia site that doesn't really seem to fit with your OSU. And the example I've been giving is if you go onto Pelotonia site and say you are Sally Joe Martinez, and we're trying to match you up with somebody on campus to see do you match with any employees? Should we be getting credit? Who's, do we create a new ID? And your name, according to HR and the standard, you know, when you're um, doing your email, is Sandra Jane Martinez. Well, how are we going to match you up that way? We're not going to know. So that would be about the only time we would miss whether you'd made a gift or not. Yes. You can't. No, you cannot make your gift um, via the via campus campaign vehicles. You have to go through either Pelotonia.org, or if you are giving to a writer and your writer is collecting checks, uh, there's a whole FAQ on Pelotonia on the website. But if you're a writer and you've collected 10 checks for your ride from folks, you have to send an itemized list to Pelotonia that lists check number one. Jane Doe, $50. Check number two, Sally Smith, $25. You have to go through those and list it so that when it gets to us, the individuals get credit. Otherwise, that writer will get credit for the entire amount. And that happens whether you're an OSU employee or not. Carl Kuhn is the, the person to contact about Pelotonia on campus. He's in charge of Team Buckeye and all that is Pelotonia here at OSU. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact Carl. He's a great guy. Be happy to help you out. Sure. So, it's because participation in campus campaign, we, account, we count all faculty and staff giving to the university. It will be on their pledge card. If well, not this year, so it won't. You can ask, but I don't. Honestly, I don't want someone to not give somewhere else just because they're giving to Pelotonia. There's so many other things that they can give to, and I know there's a. I know there's a lot of pressure around certain areas on campus to participate in Pelotonia, um, but I want people to look at their pledge cards and consider other places as well. Yes. So if you're doing the uh, payroll deductions. Mm -hmm. You're good. Good question. The question over here was if you already have a payroll deduction and you're all set, do you need to do anything? The answer to that is no. Um, if you've looked at your card, you, you see that it says exactly what you wanted to say as far as payroll deductions go. You're not planning on making another um, credit card or cash gift at that time. You don't have to send your card in. You can just you know shred it and you're done. Um, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. And probably gift processing would appreciate not having to open more envelopes. But yeah. there was another question. Yes. Yes. They don't. They won't show up as Palatania. They just show as a participating. Yeah. So it's possible when you get your first report that you could already be at, depending on what your unit was in the past, you could already be at 50 percent. You still need to send out your cards. But you could already be well on your way to success. And if you're, you know the folks in your area and you know them well enough, you know that they all they tend to do payroll deductions, your job could be almost done. It could be really easy for you. At, at Wooster campus, they have a big event every year, and they use it as their kickoff. And really, it's their main thing, period, for the campaign. They'll have a... Uh, They'll give out cards. They'll usually have a speaker. It's usually in conjunction with a town hall meeting with Bobby Mosier. And they'll have the hot dogs. The, they'll have a, a, a dinner with things donated from people in the community. And then they'll do um, door prizes. And usually the door prizes are they have a greenhouse there, so they'll have plants. Or they have donations from the community. But, and if someone gives a gift or get, buys a ticket, it's not an individual 
they don't get participation credit for that individual thing, but they, um, it might be that they have a, similar to the libraries, they might have everybody come in and bring desserts, and you go around to this table and you, you go to all the tables and you taste the desserts and you might have bought five tickets. And you put your ticket in the one you like, half the money from that item, the one that wins, half of the money that's been collected goes to the fund that's been pre-identified, and half goes to the fund that's been pre-identified by the, um, the person who made the item. So they know that whoever wins, half the money is going to go to the um, OARDC Seacrest Arboretum. And the other half, it depends on whose dessert people like the most. That person still does not get gift credit for it, but their fund gets that, those proceeds. So there's all kinds of different, yes? No problem. Yes, there is a PowerPoint on the website now that you can go in. It says, I think it's titled Campus Campaign Basics. And you can go in there and you can adapt that to uh, whatever you'd like. It has several slides in it that list different funds and some graphics with the funds and some basic stats about the campaign. So that's in there. <laughs> 